most women mistakenly believe that their intelligence will prevent them from being manipulated by a guy. And it's precisely this misplaced feeling of confidence and the lack of preparation that follows that makes them far more vulnerable to a guy taking emotional advantage of them. So today I want to expose six things men do that typically fly under the radar and can give them unnecessary power over your life and your heart so you can stop this. This is a subject that's dear to my heart because it has the potential to massively impact the quality of your life. Now, before I even start, let me just put it out there. These behaviors are not exclusive to men. I'm quite aware that many women take part in these behaviors also. It just so happens that you and the other women watching this are my audience, so I'm going to refer to these behaviors as behaviors men do, knowing that it goes both ways. Now, it's really important for you to understand that most men who exhibit these manipulative tactics and behaviors are not Machiavellian villains trying to scheme your demise and the way to control your life. It just so happens that most people who express themselves this way, in the ways I'll share, are unconscious of what they're doing. That doesn't mean it's not affecting you. That doesn't mean it's not ruining your life. But it's important to know this. Now, there's going to be always extremes of people who are very intent on applying these techniques to damage your life. But understand that the, the frequency and the intensity of this could vary. So this is not a black and white subject where he displays one of this. Your relationship is doomed. I need you to be intelligent and heart-centered enough to recognize that there's going to be nuance and the frequency of this happening and the more of these things that are taking place, the more urgent you need to get help for your relationship. Now, the essence of manipulation is simple. It's control. It's to get you through some way of emotional coercion to take a different action than the one that's best for you, the one that's best for the person in question, the person who's trying to manipulate you. Now, it's also important to know that this can happen to anyone. I don't care how smart you are, how accomplished you are, if you're a therapist or psychologist, because I've had the blessing of working with some of them, it can happen to you regardless of where you are. So rather than feeling ashamed, understand that this is human nature. And part of the reason why this happens is because we're not just dealing with thoughts and logic, we're dealing with emotions. And some of the emotions you experience in the early stages or even mid or late stages of our relationship are incredibly intense, so intense that your biochemistry is firing in ways similar to when you're doing crack cocaine or heroin. So it's something that can become addictive and it's something that can override your sense of thought and rational thinking. There's going to be some situations that make it even more likely that you may fall prey to manipulation. I'll just share a few of them. If you have body image issues, you're a prime candidate for someone manipulating you. If your biological clock is hitting in your head off the hook saying you're running out of time, it's more likely that you'll choose whatever comes to mind as the first viable option instead of really exploring if it's a good option for you. If you're suffering through anxious attachment or codependent issues, it's very likely that you can experience this. Why? Because the person can recognize this and exploit it, sometimes even without wanting to but still exploit. If you're someone who is a highly empathetic person, also prime candidate, and I'll share why, there's one of the techniques that is going to be more up for someone who's highly empathetic. If you have dating exhaustion, it's also possible for you to experience this because you, you'll just say, okay, I've gone through five back-to-back -back bad experiences. This seems, I can imagine the desert, this seems to be water, even though it's not water. Now, people always ask themselves in sometimes not compassionate ways, I can't believe this is happening to me, I can't believe this happened to my friend. And here's why it happens. Here's how it happens one day at a time. This doesn't start by a guy trying to manipulate and change your entire life. It starts with something subtle and then it grows and grows and grows until sometimes you can't recognize the relationship or you can't recognize yourself. So the first key that you need to really employ as you're listening to what I'm sharing with you right now is not to go and say, I should have known better, but I'm compassionate with myself and I can do better now that I understand this. The first technique that guys will use if they want to manipulate a woman, is going to be extreme praise and projection. Now, there's nothing wrong with a man sharing beautiful, sweet nothings to you or beautiful, sweet somethings. But when a guy is going to share things with you that don't really pan out in terms of the amount of time he's known you, he doesn't know who you are, and he's sharing how special, how unique, how different, how amazing, how one of a kind you are, and you're someone who needs that validation, and maybe you went through some hardships in your past relationship or in your childhood or both, 
and you're craving and starving for this level of emotional validation, you're going to take that in and start feeling more attached to that person. Now, when you feel more attached to the person, they can start, once they hook you in, they can start asking you to do things that go against your values, against your morals, against your thoughts. But you might, for the seeking of validation, because it's so special, so unique, attempt to do that. So whenever you catch yourself, especially if you don't know the guy, really falling for him, I want you to dial it back a little bit. And dial it back doesn't mean don't talk to the guy. Dial it back means less physical contact. Dial it back means maybe less frequency of connection. Dial it back means share things, not all at once, but step by step until you validate and know that the guy can actually be trustworthy. Second way that men will manipulate women is through guilt inducing. And guilt inducing is, and some people react more to, for example, empaths will react more to guilt inducing. He can say something to you like, I'm hurting so much, please do this for me. And, and you might want out of your need to help that person do something that goes against your values or against what you know is best in that moment. He might say something like, I can't believe you're doing this. I can't believe you're not giving me what I need right now. After all I've done for you, this is how you repay me. These are phrases that whenever you hear and the feeling that you identify, which is why it's so important for you to start understanding the specificity of your emotions, you start feeling guilty. And it's something that's coming from the outside, the statements, like if you don't do this, then no one else can do this for me, or I've suffered so much. And I, I guess I'm just going to be alone. When there's a victimhood taking place in the connection, raise your red flag and understand that maybe some guilt inducing taking place. The third way guys will attempt to manipulate you and is one of the most painful ones is through shame inducing behavior, shame inducing statements. And that could look something like this. Maybe he's saying to you, if people just knew who you really are, they'd be disgusted. Or I thought you were so much better than this. You're letting me down so much. Or something that's even punchier that's attacking your character. Like, and you call yourself a good mom. You call yourself a good girlfriend. You call yourself a whatever your profession is. Whenever he is trying to get you to feel less about yourself by attacking your character, by pointing out that if the world knew something about you, they would be disgusted or that someone's going to lose respect for you once they feel or they hear this, that's shame inducing. And that's one of the most powerful ways that people coercively get others to do things. And I need you to be really aware of this because this is one of the most toxic things you can experience in a relationship. The next one, which is similar but different, is going to be fear inducing. Fear inducing will be where the person will say something to you along the lines of think five times before you make that decision, because the consequences, and especially the consequences with, with him, might not be good. Or maybe he'll say something along the lines of, last time I shared this with you and you didn't hear me, this is what happened. Like Whenever he's saying and painting a picture of gloom and doom and fear, and you're doubting yourself, especially if you know this is something that, that's good for you, and he's asking you not to do it, by telling you the worst possible consequences or planting the seed that his decision is better than yours, that's one of those times where you need to take a step back and say, this is unhealthy. Now, before I share my last two traits with you, which are really important to know, if you're a single woman watching this, I'd be willing to bet that you're not fully aware of the root cause where you're still single. And what I've done is I've taken 13 years of helping women attract love in the healthiest way after they faced big challenges of every kind you can imagine and put together a quiz you can take in about 60 seconds that will reveal to you the number one reason you're still single. If you want to participate, all you have to do is go to the first link in the description. You'll see a page that looks like this. Answer a few simple questions and in 60 seconds you'll have the answer to the question why you're still single. And beyond that, a custom report is going to share based on your specific blind spot. What's the number one thing you can do today to reverse the trend you're on? and attract the guy you want in a small fraction of the time. The fifth way a guy will try to manipulate you is by withholding his love. If you're someone who's anxiously attached, withholding his love, the call treatment, passive aggressiveness in a way where now he was all smiles and if you do what he wants, he smiles and giggles. If you don't, he's kind of a dick with you. If he's doing that, that's a sign that his expression, his need to get you to do something coercively is taking place. So what you want to do is really understand when he is withdrawing, 
And we all withdraw sometimes in healthy ways. We all need time out. But when he is acting extremely distant as a result of you not doing something he wants, know that that's manipulation. The last way I'll share today where guys can manipulate you is by the blatant denial of truth, otherwise known as gaslighting. But here's how I'll explain it. You know that something's taking place. You saw it with your own eyes. Maybe you wrote it down. You have it on video. You have the text message and he's denying it to your face. You have firm, solid evidence of something that took place, not just imagination. And he's to your face telling you it didn't happen. That's a way for him to get you to shake your world and to believe his truth instead of your own truth. So what is the antidote to this? I'm going to share three simple things you can do right now. If this is taking place or this has taken place or this takes place in the future in a relationship, listen to your gut and you don't have to understand exactly what's taking place. The only thing you need to understand is something feels off. Something feels icky. Something feels coercive. Something feels pushy into, into my heart in a way that I don't understand. You don't have to define the emotion. Just say something's off. Number two, write about it in as clear as you can ways describe what's going on what's taking place recall when it's fresh the steps of what took place so you can look back to it later and don't think you're going crazy the third step which is essential if you're going through something serious like this is get individual help that's not the time to say both of us let's go to couples therapy you get some help first you need to understand you need to get some help to understand what's true what's not true how to express your needs how to move away if you need to Hope this is helpful and useful. If it is, it would mean the world to me and to my channel, because this is how we can reach more women and spread this message, is to click like and subscribe. If you know someone needs to hear this, please send it their way. And if you want to continue learning how you can attract the healthy love you want without the need for gimmicks, manipulation, games, or stupid techniques, make sure to go to the next video right here.